test of audio is on. Lead the way. Hello, everybody. That was painless, quick, effortless, just as everything I do in my life. <laughs> Welcome for the third time. Uh, to before load. we get too far, yeah. can they hear everybody? Yes, can you hear me now? Including me, especially me. I don't care about the other ones. Please say Yay. yes. Yes. One yes. <laughs> this is a success. We don't care what quality it is. We'll take it. You're take it. You gotta like it. <laughs> this was so fun, you guys. You can't imagine. I, I wish you were here to listen to how fun that was to go through. <laughs> but now it's the actual fun part. I'm Antonio D'Amico. I'm your host for Loading Screen. And these are my friends who will join me today. But what is Loading Screen? Loading Screen is the show we're going to do between two sessions of the actual play, The Shepherd Trials. I'm your DM for that too. But in Loading Screen, we don't talk about The Shepherd Trials. Or yes, just kidding, we kind of do. We're going to be today at least building levels for the actual play campaign. So that means that whatever we build today, you're going to be able to see next Wednesday at the same time as today. And... This is a very free space where we can invite other content creators, we can invite other people to basically share with us in uh, trying out our platform and see what they think and then talk about DMing and GMing more in general and everything else. And to help me with that mission, I have my two good, good friends, Sarah and Kyle. Sarah, say hello to the people. They heard you before. Can I just say? No, you can't. <laughs> How no beautiful comments. that intro was. You really get it right after the third time. <laughs> you know, I had some practice, you know. More often. Uh, my name is Sarah. I am the creative director here at One More Multiverse. And I also play the half-elf bard Nebia on the Shepherd Trials actual play. I am a fellow GM here at Team Multiverse. And so glad to be on the show as well with Kyle. Kyle, what's up? Hey, uh, yeah, I guess this is my first time technically on stream. Um, but not really. I'm, yeah, but not really, I guess. Uh, I, I'm usually the behind the scenes guy. Uh, currently we're having, uh, you know, a little bit of a different setup. That's why stuff is, you know, being moved around and whatnot. Uh, but I think we're good for now. Uh, I also do a lot of the pixel art in the game uh, with just I don't know, just a wonderful, wonderful team of people. So, uh, and I think some of them are in the chat right now. So, happy Heck to see yeah. you. Which is pretty uh, Half the stuff you'll be seeing on screen were handcrafted, organic, free-range pixel art by Kyle's own hands. This is, this is artisanal <laughs> pixel art, y'all. No Kyles <laughs> were mistreated in the creation each, of this pixel art. It was... Yeah, each pixel perfectly placed. Uh, mm -hmm. Exactly where it should be. This fair is a trade. Curated experience. These are now fair trade real. pixels. <laughs> yes. So I thought it would be fun to go through some level making. I'm gonna put my glasses on, which means I'm uh, getting serious. Uh, that's like I get apparently. So today, I think that we're gonna go start off at least with some battle map kind of vibe for today's stream. Like we should start with a battle map, which I think is like the baseline visual of D and D. How does that look like in multiverse? Right, guys. Absolutely. Uh, what are you building this battle map for? Well, I'm building it for the Shepherd Trials, as I said in my fantastic intro that I only said three times, but people heard once. This battle map is for the Shepherd Trials. We know that the heroes are on their way to their first trial. If you haven't seen the Shepherd Trials, go ahead and watch on our VODs. We only have one minute episode out, so it's very easy to catch up. We're going to have recaps, but those are coming in a little bit. In a little bit. We have a YouTube channel that I uh, seem to forget the name of at the moment, but we have a YouTube channel where you can actually check. If you prefer YouTube for VODs, you can go over there. But this will be for the Shepherd Trials. Am I allowed to be a part of this as a player? Yes, of course. <laughs> so how this is set up is, yes, of course, the players already know that they're going into a jungle setting and they already know that they're fighting a manticore. So that's what we kind of set up uh, during the first campaign so this will not be too much of a spoiler. Don't worry, I'm not revealing everything. If you watch the stream, you will not be spoiled, at least not horribly spoiled for the next session. There's still many secrets and many things that are still left to discover in the next session so don't worry about that neither you sarah nor our dear dear viewers and yeah yeah i think there's several uh of the viewers in the chat are from the actual campaign so 
Hello, oh, dear yeah. viewers. I love you. Thank yeah. you so much for coming. And for those that haven't seen it, please go ahead and check it out. It's amazing. It's fantastic. It's show-stopping. It's never seen before. Uh, and um, it's humble, especially. <laughs> Most importantly, it's <laughs> Most humble. Most importantly, it's humble. It is amazing, show-stopping, never seen before, and humble. Yes. So, for people that have not seen the level building side, we have streamed a little bit of level building, but for people that haven't seen the level building side, I just had a very baseline, quick little like arena style. As I said, this is going to be a battle map, but what if we start off defining more of this like jungle slash forest clearing with some tiles? And some auto kyles? Some auto kyles. Auto -kyles. Directly done by uh, Kyle. As you can see, and I'm going to zoom in right now to show you the beautiful, beautiful pixels. As you can see, auto tiles are amazing. That's what we use mainly to uh, kind of like delineate paths and places for the players to traverse. A uh, big thing here is, and a baseline with pixel art, is try to make it seem as organic as it can be without it being like, like while keeping it like that squarish shape that uh, mm -hmm. pixels tend to have. But you kind of have to have that like organic feel so it's kind of a fight but that already looks so much better right yeah yeah and like obviously with these paths and stuff like the more you add you know tiny shrubs or like little patches of grass or whatever else basically it should just break up the rest of the map um so big, that you aren't seeing yeah just like a repeating tile over and over again big bob ross vibes Happy little trees, Hi. happy little trees. Yeah. <laughs> Sleep Cat from the chat says, if you do a good enough environmental storytelling, you don't have to GM at all. So this, this is, is actually the stream where we are replacing Antonio. Exactly. <laughs> I have become obsolete and uh, now I will be replaced by a huge single pixel that will uh, be heard by anyone in chat. Not like the lesser version that you see before you today. He would also not need Honestly? glasses. Yeah. An improvement. <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> we'll I'm happy <laughs> to be replaced. I can't wait. Uh, fantastic. So we have a very basic idea, and I think that this would be fun to like start to talk a little bit of game design and what you want to do with your players if you're going to engage them in combat. What should be in an arena? I see these god awful. Sorry, love you. <laughs> god awful, like <laughs> professionally. It took a second to register. I was like, oh, it's me. <laughs> no. I see these god awful like uh, D and D maps where it's just like a basic like barren wasteland of nothing. And like, if you have a rogue, where is it hiding? What like they can't interact with the like the place at all. So put stuff in your battle maps to make it fun to be there and to make it fun to have a battle there, right? The best mm -hmm. battles in I don't know in battle shows like anime stuff like that are not happening in barren wastelands where nothing is in there. It's more fun when they interact with the setting, right? So I think we should get some trees up in here. Yeah, and with the best anime, it's a it's a barren wasteland afterwards. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What best anime are you talking about now? I don't know. That's like every anime where it's just like the entire you like, like, like the oh after the fight. Like, yeah. It does a psh yeah. and it's a big crater. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's uh, I was a big fan of like One Punch Man for that reason, where it's like they took all those, you know, end of the world tropes and they would show you like the big baddies even within the first two episodes. And it was just so creative, like how they could top themselves over and over again. Yeah, just like thinking about it now, I think we need like the Yamcha crater from DC. Yes. Yes. I mean, we don't have that in the game yet, but. Well, Kyle, what are you waiting for? I don't know. I shouldn't. I'm just, this is <laughs> just your making. Job. Work I'm sorry. You think that you're here to have fun? That's funny. Yeah, sorry. That's I'm, funny. I'm making my own asset list. Exactly. <laughs> By the way, we all work together to build the very platform that you're watching. So that's why we treat each other horribly. It's because we yeah. love each other. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Don't let your memes be dreams. Don't let your memes <laughs> be dreams. So what I'm basically doing right now is giving players some places to hide in this battle map to not make it such a barren wasteland. Also, this might be an artist thing. I don't know, Sarah and Kyle, please let me know. I hate it when there's no visual focus. Like if I pull back from this, my eyes are going to nowhere in particular. Just put a mm. big honking tree in there. Just a big tree. Just one big, sorry, what was the adjective you used? Honking. Honking. Hon honking. honking. <laughs> Just humongous this is honking. truly a masterclass of storytelling, you know? You the know? reason we 
developed one more multiverse is that we couldn't trust our GMs to paint the word picture anymore. Exactly. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> not all GMs. Step aside, we'll do the work for exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> not all GMs can be me, you know? So uh, for lesser ones, we have one more multiverse. And that is that is truly the niche that we feel. I think that we're going to do some grassy grasses. Uh, that's also the technical term. Uh, we do say mm -hmm. it. grassy grasses. Yeah. Especially the bouncy grasses. Yeah. Exactly. Um, as our resident expert of the art asset list do we have geese like i'm, I'm hearing a lot of honking and we don't have geese uh, we don't have geese. don't but we have yeah. chickens uh so literally this is how easy it is i literally just type chicken there's a chicken dragon we do have a but maybe maybe a a shy a shy chicken can be hanging out at this branch observing ever <laughs> looking those very, tree chickens. Uh, legend of zelda very legend of zelda inspired yeah. maybe oh maybe someone was talking about environmental storytelling chicken yeah. leg what happened here you know <laughs> it's painting a picture it's selling a story let's yeah, get some books up in here seemingly every map that i so like when i'm testing out assets and stuff i'll often like make my own little maps for them and almost every single one of them just has stray meat somewhere <laughs> in the in the corner. Uh, I think that's like a carryover from you know like the the wall chickens in uh, Castlevania or pretty much any yes. RPG where you just find meat <laughs> seemingly everywhere. And that's like how you regain your HP. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you eat meat, and that makes you stronger, as we have learned. Yes. I I'd really love to like take that extremely literally in a game it's like you find the driest oldest piece oh, of like meat. dusty <laughs> in the corner of dracula's castle uh and you're like yes this is healing you're like <laughs> you have gained three hit points but you've lost 20 dignity because you did eat raw chicken raw castle chicken uh it's someone from the house of belmont being like it's still good yeah. guys it's still good it's still good <laughs> it is raw castle chicken you did eat raw castle chicken and that is something that you will need to live with fantastic so it's so like i i know i don't want to make it sound like an informational but do you see how easy it is already and it's so pretty <laughs> i just put three <laughs> trees i put three rocks and it's already so pretty uh and as a baseline i think that that's like a good like very quick representation of how far you can push it with multiverse in such a little amount of time we can beautify it a little bit more right now but in terms of like a basic combat of course i think that for a boss arena it should be bigger but maybe we'll get to do that later can i interject for a moment yeah I, be who rude was that small friend? Uh, <laughs> who was that one Kyle, could you please bring our first oh, the cat. guest to the show <laughs> i i told you yeah he so he uh his name is gus he Gus. sure is. It's Gus. This is, this is Gus. Oh, it goes brrr. A pretty sweet little cat. It does go brrr. Um, But he yeah. pretty much has to be sitting next to me the entire time that I work. Mm -hmm. um, or else. Yeah, like, I, he just gets angry. So he has, like, a little chair that's next to him um, that he just hangs out in while I'll work or stream or whatever. So. That's Amazing. really cute. Yeah, he's very needy. Very yeah, talented. But it's, so as Antonio was saying, yeah. Uh, Nothing important. The cat was more important. Two full minutes of me fully ignoring Antonio as he explained this and staring at <laughs> Kyle's cat. Sorry, uh, we were able to. <laughs> we were able to build out like an incredibly organic seeming battle map, one with real obstacles. You know, things that characters won't be able to walk through. Um, and, and it's just that simple. Two minutes of ignoring Antonio, and you can do this too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you know what I said to dear you, viewers? Yeah. You know what I said today? I said, Sarah, please help me. I am manning the stream. I need your expertise. I want your support. And this is what it, this is what she brings to the table. This is what she brings to me. Yeah. <laughs> me? I don't know. I am. I find so that sad. I get a lot of work done when I ignore Antonio. So <laughs> it's it's just it just works. You know those DMD streams where people are nice to their DM? Must be nice. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm adding some ferns for texture. Uh, I think it's fun. Uh, but basically, right now, I'm literally just making it prettier. As you can see, I'm just adding more details to stuff because I'm basically done with like the very baseline concept of the battle map that I wanted to do today. You go pretty quickly. Um, we have caused a little bit of a division in the chat between people who 
uh, have never stopped hearing your voice, Antonio, and and people who have. Uh, have never stopped. It. What does that mean? <laughs> have never stopped hearing my voice? Uh, Calio says in the chat, as a person who has been DM'd by Antonio, I've never once ignored him in my whole life. See, <laughs> exactly. Thank you. I see the real ones. Exactly. Um, so if we actually took a character down, can we kind of show off yeah. um, what it looks like, how this is all actually like obstacles and a exactly. path, and uh, what does it look like to actually interact with this level as a character? Well, interacted right now, uh, I will have to put it in the verse for a second, but what we can see is basically in terms of uh, a very baseline uh, scale stuff. It would be around this. This is an average character, if I remember correctly. By the way, this is as easy as it gets. We also have a huge NPC library where you can just place down as many NPCs as you want. Uh, as you watch the Shepherd Trials, you might be like acquainted by some with some of these, which will be fun. Uh, but basically, in terms of scale, this is what it looks like. And I can activate a grid, and bam, battle map. That's it. It's that easy. <laughs> it's that easy. It's that easy. And basically, Dang. we have... Yeah, that's looking great. Gosh, you got quick at this. Oh, I'm very quick. Yeah. Uh, I've done a bunch of these. I am the level designer for Multiverse. I don't think I said that. But yeah, basically, I do You that. forgot to say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think your first Rodeo, yeah. This is my first time at the Multiverse. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, basically, uh, yeah. And someone asked uh, if they wanted to, like, recolor, you know, trying to change up the lighting in this. How would they go about that? Well, that's my favorite part. I'm glad you said that. Uh, so, 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 you go to the vibes pod, which is my favorite part. Let me zoom out a little bit just to show you. This is how quickly it is, okay? Um, why don't we make it a little bit more interactive? Chat, tell me a time of day. Morning, night, uh, afternoon, sunset, something. And Sarah, pick one. Spooky, flashback. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got one vote for twilight, summer, supper time, sunset, evening. It's all the same word. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> sunset. Let's do that. So we oh we have another one. We got dream and fog. So I think we can combine <laughs> a couple of them. So let's put us in some kind of dreamscape. Let's put us you know towards the end of the night. So here okay. it is. We are now in a sort of like magic esque let me hide the vice well wow, that's a spooky forest it's a very that. spooky spooky ooky babadooky dream no <laughs> why isn't that vibe just called spooky do we have one uh <laughs> we have i think that we have a couple of sp let me search let me use our handy dandy search feature <laughs> we do actually there you go so the spooky is more of a i would say undead feel it's very black and oh, white yeah. yeah that's more like uh you're you're in like the underworld with yeah. Hades and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And not the hot Hades, but like the sad Hades. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> yeah, not the hot Hades, not the fun Hades. Uh, but it's literally, when you're DMing, this is exactly how it works. And it, it's like, oh, you sat down for the night. It's now midnight. Okay, that's it. And now it's a night scene. I love night scenes, by the way. I think that like they really look fantastic. And let me show you what that looks like when we put a fire, because that's my favorite thing. Slap a fire down. Do you see how cute that looks like? This is so pretty. It's got like little dynamic lighting, it has stuff dynamic that bounces lighting. off the pixels. Uh, it'll reflect on your characters. So the your characters really move around. It sure does. With... Yeah. And it's as quick as that. Fantastic. So... Yeah, let's get some creepy candles around. Let people. Let's see put this some spooky yukis, yeah. Uh, there are a fair amount of graves made, or tombstones made as well. Oh, this so. one doesn't have a light. One second. I don't want to go into the light menu just for this. Uh, but I will do candles. I think the skull candle, I think, has a light on it. Uh, the spooky, the spookiest one? Yes, it does. Oh, let's make a little altar right here, and then we can maybe move on towards the dungeon. Let's do it. <laughs> Wait, I, there's a fair amount of I, there's a fair amount of skeletons just like in there in general. Let's put a grave, because I know you did beautiful graves. Oh, let's use this one. That's my one. That's my favorite. Uh, Look how pretty that looks already. Yeah, I like that one a lot too. Uh, let's add some flowers. So it derails very quickly, right? But this is kind of like a way to show you how you go from the idea oh oh let's make a temple to how quickly it goes from that idea to an actual thing that you can actually use in your games, right? Yeah. 
And, and just like in those 30 seconds where we found the candle and turned on the midnight filter, we went from this very chill forest to a very different kind of tone for our story. And trying to make it clear, like these multiverse levels, the tone of them, the expectations and all that changes as quickly as your player's imagination. So all these tools are just like one simple click away, all in the same tab. Right now, yeah. and there's, there's, a, there's a, a fair amount of assets too that uh, we kind of try and make them so that they can have multiple uses. Um, so uh, if you'll humor me, Antonio. Mm. Um, mm. <laughs> so uh, we can add a pile of dirt in front of the grave, uh, which I think if you just <laughs> type dirt in there, uh, there should be, it's like a little plot of dirt that you can normally use for a garden. Yeah, um, yeah those guys. Uh, but like you can add one in there to make it look like something is coming out of the ground, like it's like a molehill. Uh, there are like bones and stuff that you could have scattered around, you know, to make it look like things are, are crawling out. Mm -hmm. um, but... And we talk a lot about oh, GM prep, uh, but often <laughs> this is stuff that the players themselves, if they've been given, you know, access to this library and the, the game accommodates it, the players themselves, like as the GM is talking, are helping build out the scene, sharing that GM responsibility. Like we joked before about how you don't need to rely on painting this, you know, big word picture, but you really don't. And you get to take part of it as, as a player and, and create the scene together. And it's really wonderful when you realize everyone is seeing like what's in your imagination alongside you. Exactly. And you can take any, um, for example, I'm the type of the end that likes to have like stuff prepared. You know what I mean? Like a big contingent, but I also like to allow that kind of like um, flexibility for people to be like, oh, I'm actually, no, I think I'm going to pick up for like, you know what I mean? Like I, I like that idea of letting people do like add to a world, but I also like the idea of having a very robust baseline to it so to me this allows very much that if you're a dm that doesn't want to allow that that wants to like this is the world that you interact with it through my uh, dming that's fine too you can do that and if you want to be extremely open give everyone gm power so everyone can place objects all the time you can do that it's very adaptable towards how you want to dm it basically mm -hmm. but yeah basically it's beautiful this is it we had a little temple i think it looks nice right uh no. Yeah, Meg was wondering uh, in the chat. What now? And so was Tiff. Uh, if you wanted to make a random thing glow, um, you can so add. Yes. Let's make. Boop, 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 boop. What if we? What if we make these? Oh god. Oh, sorry. I always uh, forget the light enabled. One second. Flicker dynamic lighting. There you go. <laughs> so intense. No, I was Drop that fighting. down a bit. Yeah. Do you think? <laughs> oh, you're not seeing it at the same time as me. I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good, a good couple seconds after. Yeah, a good couple we're, seconds. We're yeah, I took it down. Twitch, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, you can set up lights specifically on specific points. You can set up like actual dynamic lights that, that are not tied to a specific object that are just lights and those uh, react, uh, how do you call it? Uh, dynamically. Dynamically. I guess I said dynamic lights that react dynamically. I'm very good at words. This is why I like <laughs> multiverse. I don't have to paint a, world pic a word picture. Uh, you can set up dynamic lights that react with the optics around them and cast actual shadows and actual lights. It can be very, very flexible in that way. Basically, uh, you know what I'm thinking. So, do you guys ever see Advent Children? Yeah. Yes. Okay, like that, I like the that, yes that the, like area. Yeah, that the, the entire pool of water. Thing. Yeah, uh, I like, see it. Just I, make, I like, too a whole was a weeb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, big weeb vibes. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen that, but every single time I've watched that movie, and I think I've watched it perhaps seven times. Mm -hmm. Every time I see it, I feel like I've never seen one of the scenes before. Like, yeah. It's one of those movies because it has such a like, disconjoined kind of, narrative. It remembers. <laughs> you like always misremember it. It's that movie and like Spirited Away. Every mm -hmm. time I see it again, I'm like, I don't remember this fever dream of a of a scene. It, it's such a winding, weird narrative that you kind of get lost in it. However, speaking of winding, weird narratives. I think that this baseline thing is done. I would really like to go into the actual dungeon itself. 
Are we cool Let's with that? Do, yeah. do we want to turn the lights back on on this scene? Yeah, we can do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Sarah's getting a little too scared. You're too scared. But also, I'm like, it's so dark. <laughs> <laughs> and we're loading. So, for this Manticore level, uh, those that have watched uh, the actual play campaign will know that the players are about to fight this Manticore. Uh, this will not spoil too much, don't worry about it, as I said before. But, this is the kind of dungeon that you can create with Multiverse. We really wanted to show this off, so I'm excited for it today. There we go. Give it a second to load. Mm, mm, mm. And here we are. As you can see, uh, hold on. Let me present this with a cooler vibe. No, I like Shady Corner, I remember now. There you go. This is the first dungeon that you will like to, that you will get to see in Ooh. our actual play campaign. Oh. But this is not a dungeon. Oh, wait. It is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> time to decorate. It's time to decorate. So what I basically did, I just did the very rough, like, building of a base. And then we're going to get right into it and actually get into making a nice level. But let me take you through it. So this is the entrance. You enter through here. There's a bunch of, like, vegetation. And I'm so interested in showing more vibes. So I think I'm going to do... Uh, what about something like oh. solid fields, as if like like was peeking through like the like destroyed. Oh, I like Ooh, that. I yeah, like that. yeah, I like that too. So this is our dungeon here. You enter through this beautiful entrance. You see, yes, yeah, some stagnant water uh, is, has kind of like given rise to this. Uh, temple overtaken by nature and you go through this, this little 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 here and you start to see some funny marks here marks that don't seem just of normal use or like mm -hmm. i think a thing kind of decaying and you go down into the first room which i won't elaborate specifically what happens here but you can guess because it's a dungeon uh and this is as far as i wanted to take it i wanted to build it with you guys on stream so we can show the good good people of our stream what multiverse is made of so so yeah. Uh, so first of all, I think mm -hmm. it needs obviously a lot more skeletons. I'd say I see. just just kind of everywhere. There is a <laughs> a uh, four legged skeleton as well that I think just toss in there. Yes, here um, it is. Uh, I think this boy is having a swim here for sure. <laughs> There's like every level. You know, I make it just gonna have stray meat and skeletons. That's that's nice. The, that's nice to see. Story hear. of my life, for sure. Uh, but if we go into it a little bit more, I would love to talk about dungeon and dungeon design from a video game perspective and from a TTRPG yeah. perspective. Are there any dungeons that you guys like? When you hear the word dungeon in a more video gamey setting, is there anything that you like screams at you, like, "Oh, this is a dungeon. This is my favorite dungeon." I don't know, Zelda, something like that. I, uh, for me, especially when I'm thinking like pixel art and all of that, uh, my mind goes back to the Castlevania DS games, like those platforms. Symphony of the Night. And of course, those are, yeah, Symphony of the Night, but also uh, Order of Ecclesia, if anyone's played it, Portrait of Ruin. Uh, those had some of the most memorable environments. You'd get this like big moment of tension uh, as you're, you know, walking through knowing the big bad is coming up. Uh, those are always like, what what my mind goes to uh, mm -hmm. when I think dungeon. Yeah, I'm I'm a huge Zelda fan. Um, Same. You know, one of the one of the earliest games that I remember playing um, was uh, Link's Awakening on like the old brick Game Boy. Mm -hmm. um, so whenever I think of dungeon, that's like almost automatically what I think of is just those types of rooms. Um, but I I don't know I, dungeons are so fun to design and make it's I, like I feel like you can get inspiration from just about anything uh, you know like a lot of times if I'm thinking about designing something uh, it's I actually pull from real life pretty frequently so mm -hmm. like 
and it doesn't have to be like, oh, that one time I was in a cave and then remember that. <laughs> that one time I like, was in a cave. <laughs> How no, <deep> it's Kyle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but stuff like I don't know, like maybe your grandparents' house. Like if you think about the, the way cave. that it's laid out, you know, or like uh, you know, a, a school or an office building or uh. something else. Like basically because when you build a temple or a dungeon or something you want it to feel like it actually had a purpose you know that is so big wow. for me yeah yeah so, i know exactly what you mean. know adding stuff like little dead end rooms and like closets and stuff like that i always like throwing in there um and i i like when i'm playing games and they throw in rooms that it's like well what's you know what's the point yeah. of this room like there isn't it you know it's like well i don't know somebody lives here so it's you know just a closet it tells you about the world and the story what they mm -hmm. valued uh for me a big example of this is uh i'm very slowly playing through the last of us 2 mm -hmm. because i'm a giant weenie <laughs> and um, I love the environmental storytelling in Last of Us 2, where it's like you you so clearly know who's lived in this space, who has turned it into their home, who saw it as a threat. Uh, like you you see kind of remnants of everyone who's passed through uh, like the creepy hallways and the boss levels and all that. You know what purpose they serve from a video game standpoint, and mm -hmm. you know what purpose they serve from like a narrative standpoint. And it's such a rich feeling of discovery as a player. I can just, you know, endlessly collect uh, all the little comic book characters and stuff that they that they litter throughout the game. Uh, and I'm normally not like a completionist type who would do that, mm -hmm. but they make it just the best feeling in the world. I totally get it. To me, nothing spells out bad dungeon design when I go through a dungeon in a TTRPG or a video game and i mean i think that there's some passes if you're going if i'm playing kirby if i'm playing super mario i'm not looking for uh, well is this bowser's accounting room but like if i'm playing anything else that is like a little bit more um you know uh, with a little bit more story to me dungeon especially in ttrpgs when it's just a place to kill a thing and that thing has no purpose it shouldn't be here how does that thing eat where does that thing like why is it here nothing kills the vibe quicker for me than that sort of thing you know what i mean mm. that's to me th the worst type and when i'm making a dungeon i try to approach it from a game design perspective as to like what would be the cool theme from this one uh in terms of play and in terms of narrative what is this dungeon really where does it fit in this world and why was this used or is like what is the purpose of this or what was the purpose of this once it had a purpose mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. me that's super important uh i, I, I really want to bring details uh attention to the little details that you're putting around right now with all the mm -hmm. greenery uh just like the slowly swaying fern leaves right it already makes me feel like this is drafty it's humid uh, you know, big human kind of like overtaking this man-made structure, and I love it. A big thing for me, you will see this in my DMing, I hate humidity and sweating. So <laughs> whenever this I play my, yeah, whenever I put my players in a bad spot, I'm always like, and it's really humid and you guys are sweating. And <laughs> I wait for my reaction, which would be crying, screaming, uh, cursing, <laughs> why? Down. And people are like, okay. And I'm like, no, but you don't get it. You're sweaty and gross. Doesn't that upset you? Aren't you scared? And I never get that reaction. Aren't you scared? <laughs> Are you I scared? Get scared when I'm like humid. Like, I, I do. don't think that's the first reaction. I do. I do. And there's no hand towel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when they woke up, they were sweaty from the night before. And they didn't have time to shower. That's been like a spooky story for me. <laughs> Whoa, a whole tree. You gotta. The, Are you kidding that's me? That's amazing. You gotta have a I whole mean, tree. I think so. I had a friend growing up. This is kind of unrelated. Well, you? no, it's related. Um, yeah, I had one friend growing up. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this this specific one, he had a. He lived in an old farmhouse, and he had a tree that grew through his house. It was no. Like a, yeah, it was oh, awesome. Cool. Like in is he a Disney Channel floor. kid or something? Uh, I don't know what he's up to anymore. I I haven't talked to him since, since grade school. Um, but like so, it just the way it was like the house is built around it was super funny. Where you opened up a closet on the first floor, 
-hmm. and it was just a tree like it was just that's that's all that was in there that's and then amazing. up on the second floor in the master bedroom was like more of the trunk uh and was he a like, druid yeah <laughs> there were i mean they was were kind of like uh i don't know a little bit of a hippie family but it was that uh sounds that sounds fun yeah. was yeah, it teeming with bugs was it filled with bugs and creepy so, crawlies? Especially like if it if it was a live tree, but I like I said, I was a kid. I don't remember asking about the bug situation in the house. It's <laughs> the first thing I would ask about as a kid. Yeah, now, what does it do to your big... insulation? <laughs> yeah, does it inter does it interfere with heating it? Like, do you spend a lot of money on heating? <laughs> and, and that's why we're sad and and old. That's what makes yeah. us sad and old. We're so boring. <laughs> I would love to talk about like this is a thing that has stuck with me for years uh about dungeon design and when i got into dd uh, in dd and d i don't know where that come from uh in, into D, d is um the i seem to recall i don't know her name i believe i believe it's she uh the one that made the first or the one that wrote the first strad like the first incarnation of strad talked about where the inspiration for strad come from strad is a big D, &D villain it's he's a evil vampire very mean and he is in like the best selling adventure of D&D which is Curse of Strahd for those that uh, are not in the know is it Laura Hickman it might be I think I think you said did you google that or are you just yes okay. I know nothing you should have lied well Laura Hickman oh, man. Totally and if you read yeah you can actually read this in like the new Curse of Strahd because I think that the foreword is from her but she talks about where Strahd came from and she said she was playing D&D one time where with you know, maybe not a very imaginative DM, and he was describing, um, or just someone that didn't care about the same things that she cared about, and she was describing like a very old school dungeon crawl through a dungeon that is just no role play, very, you know what I mean, dungeon. And she was talking about, they opened a room and there was a vampire, and she said, like she remember thinking, what's your story like how come are you he how are you here you know what i mean what are you doing here who like, you're not just like a beast you know what i mean you're not a, an abomination you're someone with thoughts and feelings how come you ended up here and that question was not answered because that thing was there for gameplay like that thing was there to fight a vampire and that's like the seed that happened that like kind of made curse of strad happen and i think of that all the time when i'm making dungeons you know it's to not do that why Hmm? Yeah, yeah. We, we, always asking why. It's like we talk a lot about motivation in writing. Like, who are the motivations of your player characters? What are your motivations of you know these NPCs? And it's like, yeah, but what's also the motivation of your of your setting and of of these areas you're coming across? Like, why are they here? Someone had to make them. Mm -hmm. So, and that person is Antonio. <laughs> exactly. I am tasked with the very it's easy task. All of them, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I went through this little dungeon, thing, like this little room. I'm not going to talk too much about what happens here, but you can see some very spooky, ooky, babadooky symbols on the walls. I wonder what sure. that's about. But we go through this little, little corridor here. Uh, maybe we can add some cracks for fun. Let's do that before we proceed. I just type crack. And here I go again. So let's add some more through the floor and around here. Oops, that one went over, there's no ladder. There you go. <laughs> and there you go. When I think that here would be a good place to put an actual like a place where people would perform services because it's actually a temple. Mm. So how about we put some benches down? I know we have some uh, spooky rock ones. Do have some rock ones. And while I do this, can I ask yeah. a, a question for you? How, and this is a very serious question. How do you know when your can dungeon we... is like too big or too small? Like, how do you know what's the right size for for like taking your party through? Because I I've run into issues before where I end up making you know a map, and I I underestimate how quickly they go through or i overestimate mm -hmm. you know uh how much time they should be spending on on each kind of like obstacle or puzzle or combat scene uh is it just something you learn intuitively over time or except you'll never know uh you'll never know <laughs> you will have <laughs> what basically end up ends up happening is if you're playing with the same group of players for a long time you start to get a cadence as to how quickly they go through things right yeah. but that is a fantastic question because I'm the kind of DM that over preps and preps for a lot. 
so that I can have as much as the players will ever need. You know what I mean? And it's inevitable that you would not have preps for something they do, and that's fine, and you need to be okay with that. But uh, a big thing for me is, and this is hashtag controversial, hashtag hot takes, hot takes alert, hot take alert. I'm going to say hot take now. Be ready. I don't think... Get ready to hit the button, Sarah. <laughs> to hit the button to shut me up. Hot take alert. I don't think that a dungeon should last for more than two sessions. Ooh, that is controversial. Yes. Why? I'm not a big fan. Here's the thing. I shouldn't say I shouldn't have said shoot. In my games, for me to have fun and for the people that I play with to have fun, a dungeon shouldn't last more than two sessions because the people that I play with are not huge fans of dungeon crawls, right? Like they're not their experience that they're looking for in D and D is not to be immersed into a trap filled environment that is just there to punish them mm. and it's a gauntlet and if they emerge successful they have it's a big challenge what the people that i it's tend to play with stressful yeah okay. not even too stressful they find that boring like they find like they they would rather talk to the npc they would rather like uncover the plot they would rather uh have more social encounters with dungeons and yeah. combat peppered between so i tend to think of dungeons as an experience that is like a culmination of an arc and a possible combination of an arc, which is not the only possible combination of an arc, but just one, you know? Mm -hmm. And how I think about it is no more than two sessions. Two sessions tends to be way too long to keep you stressed, which is a fun, weird way yeah. to say it. But I feel like in a dungeon, you should be scared. You should be like, oh, God, I'm in enemy territory. I'm in their turf. You know what I mean? I should not be here. They don't want me here, and they will stop me from being here, right? So you're yeah. sowing that inherent distrust with the GM, with the environment. Exactly. Um, that that sense of like weariness. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And to me, it's like you cannot keep that fear and that sense of I'm in danger. <laughs> I'm in danger. But like you cannot keep that sense of I'm in danger if you stand there for like a small a small vacation. You're stunned that you're in the dungeon because it becomes it becomes normal. It becomes your the place. You know what I mean? Whereas I kind of feel like that that vibe is reserved for a city, it's reserved for another place, but not a dungeon. So my dungeons do not take more than two sessions. Maybe yeah, one day I, I will run a thing that is longer, but I don't know. I, I like the idea. I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of like the uh, tabletop games that I play, it's a lot of like just one shots and like weird little stuff. And I do like the idea of a like never ending dungeon, mm -hmm. but still like breaking that up. Uh, in between things like oh like maybe there is a little hub where there's you know like a, a camp of people hanging out or whatever mm -hmm. else something where it's it can still be a dungeon but uh yeah i i do think that you have to yeah like continue to break it up into areas because if it is just like a constant thing like i don't know it's, it's just, just constant yeah. boring. as long whenever you break in and you're like okay this is actually like i don't know they're going it's a world that is inhabitable on the outside and they need to go down like into the world like into the earth right so it's mm -hmm. a dungeon but if they find a city uh, like that's not already that's the end of the dungeon you know what i mean like they they finish yeah. that dungeon because they're out of it they're in a city now it's yeah. a completely different dynamic i'm talking about uh very old school ttrpg players very old school dnd players will know about like dungeons that people dungeons and dragons like the beginning was going into a dungeon to play the dungeon and it was more of a almost puzzle game with combat in it you know what i mean oh there's a trap or oh, there's a puzzle i direct myself towards a more social aspect and dungeons are there to punctuate and to feel big rather than the meat and potatoes of the place i don't know if that makes sense mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, it does. I, I, I like playing a lot of weird stuff. So, <laughs> like, in a, in a very traditional sense, yeah, like, absolutely. But, um, yeah. Are there any living creatures in this dungeon? Or they sure are. are really but I would like to keep that a little bit of a secret for next Wednesday's stream. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what is living here, but there's definitely things living here. And... It is kind of sort of the mystery that you will get to, and the people watching this will get to experience in the actual campaign. Okay, what are we uh, feeling about this temple section? I, I think it's I good. Like it. uh, Sleep Cat does bring up that we can put frogs in there. I don't know if frogs are going to be a I'm surprise. And I'm on the same like, wavelength. Like, I saw the little animation happening in the, in the pod, and mm -hmm. I was like, ooh. That seems ooh. like a really good point. We can put frogs in there. <laughs> You know, many would say we can't, but I believe we can put a frog. Let's try. 
frog. Can I interest you in a frog? May I interest Dungeon you chickens. in a frog in this trying time? Mm-hmm. Let us make them talk to each other. They're friends, okay. you see. Uh, peers. Peers. Uh, they are conversing. Comrades. Mm-hmm. Comrades. They are plotting. They are friends. They are rivals. Uh, and it's all about environmental storytelling, folks, as you can see here. <laughs> Love it. There you go. Reminds me of uh, in Ocarina of Time. There's like the little singing frogs mm-hmm. on, a, on a log. They're all like different colors. That's mm-hmm. <laughs> what you think about. It's the big vibes. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. So somebody had brought up traps. I don't know if you want to put those on in stream, but we do have, you know, spike pits and I'm going to show Yeah, to I'm going to show them okay. the people. Of course, the people need to see the traps. Uh, those show might not people. those might not feature uh, as they are being put in the actual stream, but let's show the people the traps. Uh, what would be a good place for traps? Let's use this uh, seemingly empty room. Uh, pit. <laughs> uh, oh no, it's spike, sorry. Uh, yeah, so. so, no, we have better than this. One second. Spike. There you go. Uh, so you can literally, it's the size of one tile, so you can like place them. Boop. Boop. Like so. There you go. Uh, you have a more spike, like wooden spiky version. Uh, you have a spiked club <laughs> if you want to have fun. Uh, there's other traps. If I try trap. No. Uh, so <laughs> you have a trap door, <laughs> of course, you understand. Yeah, there are trap doors. Uh, but you have stuff like this where, you know, pressure plates and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can put a little bit more like stuff like this. And then I can put a uh, temple. One second. And then I can put, for example, this pressure plate here. Very unassuming, you know what I mean? But if they step <laughs> over it, pew, you know, a little arrow comes out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, difference you can have like video game uh the video game intuition kicks in you're like that's yeah. the wrong color exactly yeah. that's the wrong color it's like you know when watching like old 2d animation where you would see they're like about to pick up a book and you're like that's the one that she's gonna pick up because it's weirdly colored same vibes <laughs> you have bear traps you have a closed bear trap for um accidents and yeah and there's a bit of like a trick that we tend to do uh, in multi that reminds me a lot of like the the sleight of hand you no. might do for um you know doing a play working uh, working in theater where it's like we'll put one thing over another over another so mm-hmm. that way it's like you delete a tile and it shows the trap and you delete that trap but it shows it close exactly so yeah. it's a bit of like stop motion animation happening you get so familiar with the platform at one point that you can really like flip through them very quickly let me sh- uh and yes you can hide objects in yes. multiverse until players roll perception um so i don't know if you can do it in level not building, in level building click yeah not in level in building. session in you session. right click it and you hit hide it's and called it secret out for the gm secret oh, okay <laughs> Make secret. It's called secret. <laughs> it's cuter if it's called make secret. But yes, you can do it. I've used it a bunch. If you actually see the play, the the stream campaign, I am constantly like making things secret and I'm making them secret. It's very very quick and very efficient. Uh, mm-hmm. It works well. Okay, how are we feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> Love it. Fantastic. Uh, maybe you could have a sort of altar here or something to really make it look like a church. Mm. Uh, Do we have something even more tattered than that? No, we don't yet. It will come. Cut. You hear that? Cut. 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 No, we don't. Cut. 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 We we have fun here. You know, uh, fantastic. Uh, I think this looks like suitably altarish. Fantastic. We can go in. And basically, that's the vibe. Ooh. Some designer spikes. Some <laughs> designer spikes. Some tasteful like spikes. Exactly. Like you know. Digest you know. Instead of architecture. Exactly. Like really punchy people make it make it tasteful. Um, it's all about, you know, because it's a dungeon, you can't kill people if you ain't cute. It's true. Uh, we do have just like 
crates, like a ton of crates and stuff that I feel like dungeons just have crates laying around, right? You feel? Yeah, I want to I wanna find treasure. <laughs> well, I'm not putting the treasure today. we got to keep that for the stream. Okay, but if we were to put treasure. Where would oh. we put the treasure? Oh. Where would we put treasure? You could show okay. off all the treasure chests that we have. Okay, we what about? Of them. I'm going to show Sorry, the people. Are you going to give us a mimic? I will quit. <laughs> no, I don't. I actually hate mimics. I will mimics not give you a mimic. Bullshit. That is the kind of vibe of like, I, I will not do that. I'm going to show the people how I actually build like architecture, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Mm. So they can see. So let's say this is actually not going to be the stream. So don't try me. Uh, but uh, so don't try me. I'm so aggressive sometimes. Oh, uh, <laughs> but uh, here is how I go about making an actual war. Uh, I just need to find it. Here it is. And then I choose the roof, which is this one. And then we can get to work. Is that your level building voice? You are a tiny Italian man. I'm a tiny <laughs> Italian man. Yes. Well, I speak fluent Italian. I will have you know. Do you really? That's yeah, so... I do. Dang, wow. I don't know that. I mi piacerebbe tantissimo parlare più italiano. Mi mio vocabolario orribile. Un beso. I didn't see your hands moving. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't pick it up. You're not fluent. <laughs> if there are any Italians in chat, uh, un beso, por <laughs> Oh, Sam, we need to speak. We need to speak on this. It has come to my attention that you may not be the biggest fan of our sign-off in our stream. Care to elaborate? Me? Mm -hmm. No, I love it. Oh, you I love just it? don't know what's coming. <laughs> At the end. <laughs> It's just lying in wait exactly. where randomly Antonio will will kiss to the wind at us. It's just like everybody everybody just start kissing. <laughs> <laughs> you really y'all need really need to come to the streams. They're fun. Okay, fantastic. So let's make some treasure. Some treasure. Some treasure. <laughs> um so what are we thinking? Are we thinking like Aladdin, big piles of money? Yeah. yeah, oh my gosh, Let's yeah. Let's go. Use the money pile. Yes. Use, there's a ton of rubies. Okay, what if huge door that leads to treasure? Um, and yeah, then uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. we can start to build on with like small money piles. Mm -hmm. uh, from the chat. Yes, uh, chat. Someone says, I love the idea of you guys being like queer eye for the lame dungeons. So you renovate boring dungeons. To yes, let's do that. <laughs> I, I would love that. I would, I would love, love like, that. Submit your battle map. Submit your shitty dungeon. It. We will make it pretty. That's such a good idea. Whoever said that. <laughs> I will. Okay, I'm not going to say shitty dungeon. I'm just going to say it's a great dungeon. <laughs> it needs some work. I will say shitty. You know, Sarah's a nice one. I will say shitty. It's fine. Oh, so this is how the personalities break down. Exactly. Like, pumps them up. <laughs> super nice. <laughs> we need to add... How do you call it? Do you call this a lingot in English? This. What is it? A gold bar? Uh, gold bar. I just call it a gold bar. Okay, we call that a lingote. I don't know if that is... The... Uh, is that maybe like an ingot? I don't know. Oh, that might be it. Yeah. The same thing. Mm. So much gold. Riches. Trade. You know, rich like you know, <laughs> rich people or like Scrooge my dog does this. Uh, <laughs> I feel like nothing takes treasure more than a painting like half buried in gold. I feel. Mm -hmm. Where like the frame is more expensive. <laughs> yeah. <than> you. <laughs> exactly. Oh. You oh, have a oh. random sword in there. I want. Okay. You can't have a pile of money in a dungeon without yeah. a skeleton. I agree. I mean, I'll, I'll never say no to putting a skeleton in any room. I have, I have an idea. How about this? Oh yeah, if that as if uh, that asset isn't an obvious nod to my favorite game, I don't know what it is. Yeah, Super <laughs> Mario, right? I love Super Mario too. <laughs> That's it. That's Mario's famous. Sword. I love Mario's sword. I love when Mario cuts the people in half. So cool. I mean, that is Kirby's knife. It's Kirby's me. knife. <laughs> 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 I love when Kirby cuts people in two. Actually, Kirby does have a sword, so I guess that's not that much of a joke. Okay, look at this amazing trick. Okay. Da -da -da. 
What a trick. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you are evil and hateful. I will ne you're never coming to my load screen again. <laughs> One second. Um, I don't know what about that made me laugh so hard. <laughs> <laughs> the so the genuine meanness that came with it, I think, is what it was. <laughs> um, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Do you see what I'm doing? No. Come on. Explain it to me. Oh, okay. Oh, oh you... shit. Oh, shit. You're right. Okay. Now cool. it's a pit. How? Good. Wait! Oh my God! My brain just broke. I'm like, it's vertical now. But it's yeah. Deep. See, these are the tricks. I think that Meg. Uh, yeah, Meg, Meg did something. Like Meg this think, was the first one to do this. Uh, Meg is screaming in chat. I did it. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that Meg was the first one to do this, and I thought it was such a cool idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as you can see now, look at that, guys. Oh wait, hold on. What if you put? Can you put stairs? Oh, that will. What if you just put a rope? Like they have to climb. Across There's not the a little... straight rope. I think like, it's being imported. Oh, maybe maybe the imported like since today. Let's see. That it should be soon. Soon, but I don't know if it's there yet. Yes, yes, there is. There's a rope. Oh, those are the. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Awesome. Let me... ah. There you go. The grappling hook. The grappling hook can make can make for a cool rope, but let's make the stairs as Kyle said. <laughs> I'm trying to. I think I, I think I just made stairs that were that color. I don't know. If mm, uh, white ones have not. Um, no, they they're not in yet. They're not in yet, but that's fine. Um. So what these two are talking about is like our team is creating stuff and then they get imported into the game on a fairly regular schedule. So sometimes there's a little bit of a disconnect between when we make something cool and mm -hmm. when it's in game. Exactly. And this is the kind of thing that Sarah was talking about, about like being a little bit ingenuous and like reactive during play. If this is a trap and they fuck up, do this and that's it. You know what I mean? And they fall towards the lap. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a kind of like you Need can. Gap. Yeah, exactly. You can be quick on your feet and make something really fun very quickly through that. Okay, let me add a chest. What if I'm one of your like stickler players and I'm like turn on the grid? I want to see how far away it is. <laughs> That's fine. I'm okay with those players. I can, I can turn on the grid like this. So I can tell you that that is exactly one, two, three, four. So that will be twenty feet. In D and D, of course. If you in other systems, it'd be different. But in D and D, that would be twenty feet mm -hmm. because it's four squares away, and each square is five feet. Um, and we would be able to change the size of that grid as yes, well, depending on the game. Yes, of course, exactly. So you can change. It can be very customizable. Uh, and Kyle wanted some skeletons, so let's put them on the bottom. And then I think we should take a little bit of a break. But we're gonna ask people from some fun stuff. No, I don't want the dog yeah. to die. I don't want the dog to die. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, no. I just realized what you were referring to. Oh, no. Oh, no. I just thought of it for a second. No, 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 no. I don't like what that's implying. Yeah, exactly. But this guy looks so good with the spike right there. Look at that. Man, I do like the idea that an entire cow oh, fell wow. in there somehow. Let's do that. This is like a Mortal Kombat <laughs> falling through the tunnel. Fatality. Um, no, oh mistaken. yeah, Meg said if you look up bone, uh, there are <laughs> if you look up there bone. Are, like just just regular bones. Uh, they must not be tagged under skeleton, but we can do that. Amazing. Put a piece of meat. Yeah, gotta put that, put that <laughs> giant piece. Of what meat if it's like on a little spike like this, and it's tantalizing? You know what I mean? Do you want this treasure or do you want this treasure? You know, like you know, <laughs> choices. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I think that we've gone through like quite enough of this dungeon. We started with nothing here and nothing here. Uh, I think it's a good moment to take a little bit of a break. But before we do, what? because like that, that's what we thought we would be doing. Let's take a little bit of a break and then let's take audience submissions. So go ahead, summon your most chaotic energy, throw at us whatever you want to throw us. We will make a little small piece of a level with what you want to throw at us. Okay? Please... 
hold off for the break and we'll be right back we'll be back in five we'll be five, back in right? five yeah, yeah around five we'll minutes do five yeah, yeah. all uh, right Brew see you guys dungeon suggestions see you who counts up hello everybody i count up my name is Antonio D'Amico, and I love to count up. So, we were talking about our beautiful, beautiful dungeon and our beautiful, beautiful pixels, and we thought it would be very fun to do a little bit of a chaotic level with audience suggestions. So I hope you've been putting those on chat, uh, or go ahead and do that now, uh, and let me create a new level real quick. Very good. Thank God Kyle is here. <laughs> Fantastic. There you go. Uh, okay, so Meg put them all together and says, uh, Pan's Labyrinth Buffet Dungeon, Dungeon in the Clouds, Inside Monster Dungeon, Classic Dragon Lair Dungeon, Corrupted Dungeon of Healing. Uh, I saw somebody had said Steampunk at one point. Um, I think just throw whatever we want of those things into it. <laughs> corrupted Dungeon of Healing. Corrupted. Yeah, Corrupted Dungeon of Healing. I do, oh. like, we, we were talking about Pan's Labyrinth for a bit. I think it'd be cool to put, because we have those big, uh, like, tavern-style tables. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm that we could just put a bunch of, like, little candelabras on and all the food that we have. Mm -hmm. Um, like a All right, big... so we got a buffet table. We got a buffet table. Um, and then we have corrupted dungeon. Oh, I feel like it would be, you know, one of those like unnerving oasis kind of settings where it's like you realize, you know, you eat a piece of fruit and you're stuck there forever kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, we can could... make the food glow. Yeah, it's, it's, make it's... it creepy. Yeah. We can make like a sort of like... Okay, so it was steampunk something, corrupted dungeon of healing. Um, do we want to? Exp I don't know. That is. Does it look like that little like uh, thing that we did? That little like temple that we did in the first uh, thing, like water with glowy bits. Yeah, I could. I could see that. Um, if we have. Uh, okay, so what if we we have like this stone. Uh, area for a background can we add like grass and stuff to that yeah so, like, so maybe they... like yeah so like maybe there's like a little bit i don't know just kind of a weird mix mash of stuff let's start with some spooky i think like jungle grass tends to be it's darker so maybe yeah, that like would do jungle grass so you want to start with grass as the base and then we'll add like the yeah. stone and rocks exactly together. let's yeah. do that yeah. nice nice Fantastic. Okay. So let's start with like a very base baseline. Uh, do we want to start with stone or with water? Or water with stone around it? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do maybe like a, you know, we have like our stone floor and then like kind of water in the middle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. Do we want to do the dinner table stuff or are you? What if this spooky dungeon of corrupted healing is a sort of like Alice in Wonderland tea scene where like the healing comes from a dinner table, but it's spooky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that's great. Yeah, I think Meg had said something in there about the, the food healing, healing food question mark is, is what it was. So yes, yes, healing food, Meg. Fantastic. Okay, we have, uh, this is called a tea. Uh, only the best <laughs> level designers can make it uh, happen, and uh, I'm once again Antonio. exactly flexing on you by uh, my level design capability capabilities. Okay, fantastic. So let's do some water. Oh, ah, this music is pretty spooky. It fits the vibe. Let's go. <laughs> you want to cool. dim the lights from now? Oh, do you want to start from... Yeah, let's, let me finish this water and we can start. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Calliope says, this is where all the floor chicken comes from. <laughs> this is... <laughs> it comes through the cracks yeah. and into the dungeon. This it is... Uses. Okay, I like that. This is the source of 
castle chicken, floor chicken, wall chicken. This is where it's born. Mm -hmm. Someone's got to be making it. Exactly. And do you know who it is? <laughs> There's just like this one caterer who shows up to, you know, Dracula's castle and like watches them take the box and just throw it on the floor, like right in <laughs> front of them. It's Probably the chickens. For someone to eat his food. I think it's the chickens that make the chicken. <gasps> Could be. And we oh, have man. a fantastic chicken statue to guard this uh, beautiful place. <laughs> Do you have chicken statues? <laughs> okay. Um, someone in the chat says, is there a way to make assets out of the pre-made ones in one more multiverse? Asking this because I made rafters out of stairs and wooden platforms, and I did a lot of internal screaming because you can't drag and drop things to some extent. Can't you do multi-select? You can multi-select. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Mom, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to drop a bunch of stuff down. And with that same tool... You select yeah, you all of it. Everything. And then you can that move That could have been live as of like <laughs> three weeks ago. So if this yeah, is... Yeah, I, I no, think sorry. that's a, maybe a relatively new one. Maybe but. maybe it wasn't there before you... When you started to do your rafts. If it is, sorry about that. We are an evolving platform uh, and stuff gets added in all the time, which makes it exciting, you know what I mean? Because you mm -hmm. get it to see to grow, but... Okay. We have a baseline. We know it's chicken theme. We know it's healing theme. We know it's food theme. Let's add some tables. And we can add some candles on there for some For light. sure, yeah. So I'm thinking big, long table, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Instantly, uh, Jenny in the chat swoops in to answer the <laughs> product question. <laughs> our best engineers. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> Thank you, you say Jenny. Her name three times and yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, I think I'm a big yeah, fan of. Funky. Yeah, I'm a fan Ready of. Last Supper. Yeah. Oh, vibes. <laughs> I've never heard someone <laughs> refer to the Last Supper as vibes. Vibes, yo. <laughs> vibes, though. Mood. Mood. Yeah. It's, it's an adjective now. <laughs> the Temple of the Bountiful Fowl. That actually sounds really That nice. sounds very cool. so good. I, I do like the haunted KFC also. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Two very different takes on it. Two different <laughs> vibes, one destiny. Oh man, we got a request for bones. Oh man, I wonder if it's Kai who wrote. It wasn't me. I was gonna say. <laughs> I'm agreeing with One that. second, I'm doing chairs and then we'll do bones. We have like nearly 50 viewers and they're just all Kyle. <laughs> they're all Kyle screaming bones, bone, bone, bone. bones. It's Kyle banging fist on table, bone, bone. <laughs> you got off. Like... Oh, can we flip it? Yeah. Yeah, we can. Sure can. Nice. I've done that a thousand times. So yes, I know we can. <laughs> <laughs> Can you select multiple things and, not yet. and send them all backwards? Not, no, yet. not yet. Let's leave uh, one chair on top of the table because it's going to do like a like a bat mitzvah effect. Oh, I you see. Carry someone around. <laughs> okay, wait. I'll, I'll add a fancier chair to, for that purpose. There you go. These candles might be overkill. I feel like they're too close. So let me... You know what every dungeon needs a bat mitzvah. I think that <laughs> I, that is the baseline of a dungeon. Okay, so I think that this chicken is the master of ceremonies, the MC, main chicken, if you will. Uh, that was funny, and I wish we laughed. Um... <laughs> I did laugh. I genuinely laughed. <laughs> oh, I missed it. I'm, I, I'm telling you. I said it at the start of the stream. I'm ignoring you. <laughs> Why? Why did it do to you? <laughs> 
No, it was very good. It was very fun. Thank you. Whatever it was. Whatever it was. <laughs> Whatever that joke was. See what Everyone I have to put up sad. with? Abuse. <laughs> I'm an attentive player. <laughs> when are you going to start? When are you going to start in that endeavor? <laughs> I'm trying to set up like what floor I like best. Oh, I think we got that floors. We got floors. We got gizmos and whatever a penny. I don't know the lyrics in English. Okay, fantastic. For what? For the language. Little Mermaid. Oh, <laughs> I was thinking of. I think it's Music Man. Yeah, we got Trouble down here in River City. Uh, that's it. That's a little bit of a deep cut if you're not a fan of musicals. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm, I am not big on musicals. Who are the theater kids? Out yourself. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> what what Come food? Forward. What food are we thinking? Just all kinds? I think all kinds. All kinds. The food, I by the way, I will go. It wants yeah. to be like a dessert table. Do we have enough for that? I kind of love this like really creepy like fruit like abundance of fruit harvest sort of mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't have a cornucopia, but let's go. Sounds like we need one. What is the the chicken doing on the table? If you had heard my joke, <laughs> oh, you would know. That's, that's the joke. Uh, that is the the MC. I said See? it's the MC, the main chicken, and it was very ah. funny, and everyone in chat left. Yeah, the whole chat just lit up. The whole chat was like, morning. wow, my god. What a good joke. What a Let good me joke. scroll back and verify that information. <laughs> no, don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> I swear it's there. I'm not liking this cornucopia of fruits. I'm going to be very honest with you. Mm -hmm. I think I'm... Maybe have a couple like just on the ground, you know, some, some spillage. Oh, I love that though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One second, I need to uh, correct my mistakes. Uh, yeah, I think that would definitely go into a spookier, dookier. Dookier? Spooky, ookie, spooky dookie, dookie, babadooky, <laughs> uh, freaky deaky, uh, hobby lobby. My hand is hovering over the, <laughs> <laughs> that injects Antonio. <laughs> no. How oh, oh, rude. Big, big pile of donuts. We got like four. Oh, yes. Let's, let's have some. Oh. Yeah. Just Maybe. a donkey's run. You know? Yeah. <laughs> do they have Dunkin' Donuts where you are, Antonio? They do. They do. I don't know if the uh, if on the island, but in mainland Spain, yes. Mainland yeah. Spain is when I say it like that. I'm like, I guess that's the way to say it, but it sounds so yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah. You're not. You're an island boy. Yeah. Now. I'm an island boy. Island boy. I live in the Canary Islands. Everybody, go Google it. <laughs> 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 it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> Read a book. Read a book. No, I meant it in a nice way because a, a lot of people have said, I'm the Canary Islands. They say, Is that the cannibal ones? No. What, what did it someone say? Crocodile. No, the, the Cayman. I was like, No, it's not, not that one. It's yeah, another one. Not, not <laughs> I like this dark feast. I think it's pretty spooky. It is a dark yeah. beast. But we do get eggs oh, and bacon. Man. What uh, NPC are you going to throw in there, do you think? Uh, oh. I, well, so we do have a chicken god, which is... I pretty... think that's absolutely the way to go. <laughs> like maybe he's like looming in the background a little bit. I think bit. he is. I dare you. I think he absolutely is looming in the background. One second, I'm going to honor uh, Sarah's request to do some uh, yeah, spillage. Yeah, throw it on the floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, crab, for sure. Decadence. Mm -hmm. There's an octopus tentacle in there. There too. sure is, because I've used it in games a thousand times. <laughs> really? Yeah, shout out to Drag for always summoning tentacle of Adar, and then I'm like, okay, time to use the tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that this is a pretty pl like plenty filled table. Let's do some. I have a oh, fantastic. So cool. Right? Okay, so get ready, everybody. What do we have to? The big chicken. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the big chicken. <laughs> Our boy. Our good boy. Uh, I do like so him big. just looming. <laughs> Huge. We, I feel like he needs like also to be on some sort of platform. Maybe gated off. Like you see him like right behind. I was dinner. thinking 
it would be cool to have him like stand above the trees looking down at the table Ooh. oh and throw some trees in there yeah Creepy. let's throw some trees in there let's do that okay. murder most foul <laughs> i love that that's i can't take joke. credit for that that is chat <laughs> chad you're doing amazing sweetie <laughs> meg wants a big egg oh no i remember <laughs> oh the big egg i know what she's talking about it, how does it, it always come back into every single stream? it's insane we're haunted <laughs> we're haunted stop it, stop it. get fight. some help <laughs> okay the big egg will come i will assure you uh oh man i think it's because we spent so much time making it that we're like <laughs> we need more look at our time. egg <laughs> look at it though do you see we our egg it. <laughs> it is a rite of passage for everyone who streams on the multiverse channel it's like at some point you will encounter yeah <laughs> look at it well it's coming <laughs> Does this feel gated off by a like by a forest yet, or are we are a little we... bit? I think you could throw some more behind him too if you yeah, want. Yeah, but... I think we need it to be a bit more dense because I I believe he can just like walk on over and you know mess my whole shit up. It looks well, like that's what he's about. Dense. So, <laughs> okay, one second. I will like do this. This is the magical level building. I know it looks awful right now, but give me a second. <laughs> we believe you. You do have this job. <laughs> <laughs> sounds vaguely like a threat. It sounds like no. you're. It sounds like you're about to say, but not for long. No. At least for now. You want to keep that job? <laughs> you put an egg down. No, I would That's... never, because then it would have to be my job. <laughs> that <laughs> Nobody wants to be the egg keeper. Mm-hmm. I am uh, the ga the egg guardian, guardian of the egg. And Poseidon does quiver before me. That sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, do we live, love, love this? Yeah, are you making them bigger? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I haven't... <laughs> I'm not moving past that comment. <laughs> What? What? You no, know, I actually, I actually saw a live, laugh, love sign like the... unironically posted out in the world. Bless whoever um, had it. Live your best was... life. Bless, bless and this I, mess. I did bless like this mess. Bless this mess. <laughs> bless this mess. I take, and I was like, this can't be real. Oh, it's real. Oh, it's real. I can't believe you will subtweet me on stream like this. Okay, I invited you to my house, and then you tell my business to the stream. I do like the idea of your island house with a big "bless this mess" sign. Bless this in. mess. Live, laugh, love it. Uh, gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss. Uh, okay, we got another suggestion. We yeah. got undead guards in okay. the that are that are kind of guarding over the chickens. So maybe down Would towards the say... bottom those involve bones i mean probably <laughs> oh it's true i forgot about the bones i'm back uh one second but i do have a better guard yeah That's who's right. that npc we got oh i was thinking this i was thinking like these cool armor oh guys. yeah we do have big suits Ooh, of armor yeah let's go oh that looks so good oh shit, that's nice thank you thank I'm you just waiting for them to come to life yeah they're like because you the coaster just try me you know I've changed my mind for seven times about floors, and you will have to be okay with that. There's just so many floors that Kyle made for us. So many floors. Well, Meg made a bunch too, and so did oh, I you. love it that it's elevated. <gasps> oh, Dang. Good. So good. Fascinating. Okay, fantastic. Uh, what was it? Oh, bones. 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 Get bones. Bones. Um, how do we want to do this? this is why people oh, that's them. the thing that they say. Um, <laughs> that's the thing that they say. Uh, you you watch Brooklyn. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been I've been caught up. I, I haven't been caught up for a minute, but I've tried. I, I I've watched the new Alexandria thing. It's cool. Uh, yeah, I'm also a season behind, but it's chill. It's fine. I think I'm probably season nine too. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. I gotta get Meg to watch it though. But... Meg? Have Meg hasn't seen it? I don't think so. That's what we were talking about in the. Chat yeah, because I was time. telling her she's like Amy Santiago, and she's like, "Huh?" And I was like, "Perfect." <laughs> <laughs> With her binder full of fun. Okay, let's add some chickens here. I feel. Chicken is spelled with a C, did you know? Chat has informed us there's been total miscommunication, Wait. which I deserve because... <laughs> Wait, we were talking about Brooklyn Nine-Nine, weren't we? Yeah, we are. Oh, but he yeah. wasn't, apparently. I wasn't. Oh, what, were you what were you talking about? I thought you were talking about... I thought you said Critical Role somehow, or like... Uh, oh, I... <laughs> no, I know what happened. I said, how do you want to do this? And I said, oh, that's what they say. And you said, oh, you've been watching? I said, oh, I haven't been caught on. That's what, That's where the miscommunication came in. Gotcha. Fascinating. Well. <laughs> Crushed it. Crushed it. Okay, do we love the idea? I do. The idea of chickens guarding the forest, uh, guarding its their, their god around them? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. I'm imagining, I like... to be a little more subtle. Like, you almost have to, like... You have to... Maybe there's one or two in the trees, okay. but then... There's Put like some the just like scattered about, and you're like, yeah. what is happening? Maybe one right next to the entrance, and you're like, well, how did Gosh, you get here? A, and then what an ominous vibe! Like when you walk into your there's just a big table, and then a bunch of tiny beady chicken eyes peering yes. at you through a floor. I actually love this vibe a lot, and I think that this is yeah. a cool level. <laughs> it's a new hangout. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, it's not some little dancing ones. I love these ones. Look at these mm -hmm. boys. The ones that hop around are real good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would they're be very interesting talented. if they're all like there's like more chicken on the table and you're like eat it eat it. Is... <gasps> maybe that's a hero kind of situation spirited away if you eat yeah. the chicken you become the chicken you become the chicken <laughs> yes yes right yes. next to him there's a single leg of chicken and somehow the table's full of food but somehow you would only Wait, want i kind of want this for my like upcoming like monster of the week game. <laughs> yeah. i'll save the level yeah. then Maybe actually, like... like, please do. I, I think I actually need this. The more and more I'm like hearing, I'm like, oh no, this is good. Yeah, maybe the table's full of food, but somehow the only thing you really want is that single like chicken leg in front of the MC. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's add some more trees, and I think we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Checks out for me. I don't know how else you can enhance this. There's like a good amount of poultry and. A good amount of poultry. Uh, <laughs> and for uh, me, like, what else do you need from what else like, do you need? final level? Exactly. I do hate to be the one to say the egg has not been placed. Oh, yet. it's true. I'm so sorry. Uh, how dare I was I was waiting for chat to scream about it, so I figured I'd get it, it out of the way. Yeah. Or, and by chat, I mean Mac, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I was about to sing. Chat or Mac? <laughs> One second. I'll be done uh, in a what second. What other kind please. of trees are there, by the way? Chat's asking about trees. So there's a t thousand. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. No, there's not a thousand. He's but... just not using them. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, you don't know anything about level building. <laughs> I'm using <laughs> rainforest trees the because ones that go together. Yes, but there's plenty of others like this one. Do you see how it doesn't go together? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we have all kinds of trees we have i guess like, these ones could yes, work yes, yes. it's a little bit too dark but yeah uh we have even blue trees if you're making an mech inspired level there you go um mm -hmm. uh, okay Gosh, i do want to make a namekian inspired level maybe we do that next time <laughs> maybe next time yeah okay next time on dragon ball z next, next time, time on, on dragon ball z <laughs> next time on loading screen z uh egg Egg. Okay. Yep. Are we ready? We can't go back. It is. <laughs> it's so big. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll never get over how we made this and never ever used it. <laughs> Why did we make it? And this is before we had scale figured out in multiverse. This was like one of our um, biggest assets. And we just. Are we. Are we, like, did we fix the size of uh, things getting brought in? Like, I know we weren't able to put the dragon in place before. Yeah, we have a giant ass dragon. Yeah. To be placed. I don't know if that got, <laughs> I don't know if that got fixed yet that we can add our big dragon, but Just he's say wonderful. Say three times. That okay. Can answer <laughs> Let's go in. 
<laughs> and she did show up. <laughs> and Jenny's like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. No, he didn't fit. <laughs> well, here is our level. I think that this is pretty conclusive. This is a pretty cool level. Uh, oh, okay. We enter through Thank here. You, yeah. And we arrive at the beautiful dinner scene accompanied by chickens and the MC. Behind it, the enormous egg welcomes you. And even further beyond, the chicken dragon looms over the banquet menacingly. And that is our level. I think it looks pretty good. It's great. Yeah. What are you what are we Thanks, what are we Jack. calling it? I With think the, that I call it name. chaos level, but let's name it something else. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do like Haunted KFC. Okay, hear me uh, out, hear me out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Do we... Okay, do I'll we... give it to you. Okay, thank you. Get ready for Gus on the screen in about two seconds. <laughs> yes! Hi, buddy. Look at Gus! <laughs> he loves the level, too. With that, with that, we close it off. And for that, uh, we're on. We're out. Yeah. We uh, out. Thank you so much, everybody, for thank tuning you. in to Loading Screen. This is the kind of variety show we have between our actual play sessions uh, that we run. Our actual play is the Shepherd Trials. I am one of the players. Uh, Kyle here is our fabulous operator, making it look cool. Antonio is our amazing GM. You can catch that at the same time slot at 5.30 EST on this Twitch, you know, twitch.tv slash play multiverse. Uh, you can join us on our Discord so that you can get into the level building tools. You can play with us on the games calendar and see for yourself uh, how we are building out this platform. Uh, catch us on Twitter, of course, and Discord, all that good stuff. Uh, and thanks for tuning in. We will see you next week. Thank you so yeah. much for coming, you guys. Our send off. Are we ready? Do no. I get to do it? I don't ever get to do it. Yes, Kyle, do it. it. You get to do okay. it. Go ahead. We're watching you. Me? Me yeah. first? Yes. You're doing Just, it. You're well. sending us off. Mwah. A little flurry. A little flurry. <laughs> See you guys. All Thank right. you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> and then